we have a challenge here, and that challenge is to provide more frequent and ongoing access to social learning in the everyday life of the student with visual impairments. It's very easy for the student with visual impairments to become very tied to a particular paraprofessional. It's very easy for them to maybe be tied to one particular peer. And what can happen in those situations is if it's a paraprofessional or a teacher, it could be, it could be the teacher of the visually impaired, but anyone who is too overly protective or doesn't let the person take risks, doesn't think about how to facilitate social skills and interactions, what then happens is we have a student who becomes static, all right? Their skills are not dynamic. They're not continuing to learn in the way that the other students are learning. Um, so often we see in working in the different community schools that when a student reaches middle school, if their social skills are not intact, they begin to fall further and further behind their peer group. All right, their peer group is now into dating. They're into trying to find themselves and who they are. The tasks are going to be the same for a student with visual impairments. They need some additional supports at that time, but the more competence we've built in them over the early years to, to um, participate in social situations, to analyze social situations, and to be effective, the better off they're going to be when they hit the middle school years. We need to think about how we provide frequent and ongoing access to social learning. Again, not to be redundant, but it, it happens that we'll try within our classroom environments to set up social skills time. And again, think about your own life growing up. Social skills were not just a time that was carved out in an IEP or a time that was carved out within your day that was recess. Even in the classroom, you were engaged in social learning and social dynamics with your peers, with the teacher. These are all activities that, if we're not careful, the student with visual impairments will lose access to unless we intervene effectively. I mentioned earlier that we need to have high expectations for all children and youth, and that we need to understand what other children and youth are doing to set realistic goals. Again, through good assessment and observation, we can begin to define what tasks we want the child to learn how they can be more effective within the classroom and build a firm foundation for later learning. Again, we can't take social skills learning for granted or assume it will naturally occur without instruction. It requires direct intervention and specialized instruction. It requires teamwork, as we'll talk about later, by the teacher of the visually impaired, by the family, by the classroom staff, and as much as possible, engaging the peers within the situation. One way to think of it is that we need to help hands become eyes and develop listening skills and interpret events unseen. Again, it's that whole dynamic about how we're going to bring the world to the student with visual impairments or bring them to the world in terms of their social skills understanding or their social skills learnings. Um, Another good quote, a way to think about it, that I just recently read is a quote that said, inclusion is not geography. All right, by putting a student with visual impairments in a classroom or in an environment of any type, even an after-school program, without giving them the tools to access learning, especially in the area of social skills, to access participation with their peers, if we don't give them those tools, then all we've done is put them in a classroom and not included them, but actually placed them on an island, all right? They, they're going to be isolated from their peers unless we figure out ways to reach out and begin to really get them involved. One good resource that helps you look at how to involve students uh, and how to step back and observe and facilitate is a book by Dr. Laurel Hudson called Classroom Collaboration. Within that book, there is a poster that you can order for your classroom, free of charge, called The 19 Ways to Step Back. It enables you to step back and think about or to look at situations that you're in and say, when should I step in, when should I help, when should I not? When, when can I give that child or student with visual impairments the opportunity to take risks, and how often do I give them those opportunities? Do I overprotect them? Do I not take advantage of social learning opportunities because we're so, so centered on academic achievement? Again, Academic achievement and achievement later in life requires good social skills for you to implement what you've learned when you go into the world of work.